Welcome back to The Big Show. I'm Brian Kilmeade. Gordy Hirsch has a Gordy, an important part of the show, one I've been looking forward to more than anything all week. Now, earlier in the show, we showed you how Mets pitcher Pete Hornish made a successful return to the big leagues after a lengthy bout with an often misunderstood disease. Hornish is one of the many athletes who suffer from chronic depression. Here with us to explain how tough it really is for an athlete to deal with sports in general is sports psychologist Dr. Tom Ferraro. Dr. Ferraro, thank you so much for joining us today. Nice to be here. You have not dealt with depression for the first time. For many American sports fans and for many Americans, we are dealing with it for the first time. How long has depression been out there and how long has it been misunderstood? Um, well, I think that a large majority or a large number of people that are watching uh, sports are familiar with depression. About 25% of women and 10% of men have a major depression at one point in their life. What's the difference between being depressed and being diagnosed as having depression? Uh, having a major depression is something that's very, very serious. What happens is that there's vegetative signs uh, that the athlete or the, the person experiences. Poor sleep, lack of appetite, a real feeling of hopelessness and suicidality. That's very, very different than kind of mild feeling of uh, unhappiness, uh, irritability, um, kind of disappointment or low self-image. That's called dysthymia that many, many people suffer from, but that's quite a bit different than a major depression, which can lead to suicidality and uh, can lead to hospitalization also. Is it kind of uh, surprising from the standpoint when you look at Pete Harnish's situation, middle of his career, 30 years of age, you hear this when people are getting to the tail end of their career and other people are catching up so they're not as successful, may not be in the limelight. So is this situation kind of surprising or does it no, not really not matter? not really. Um, major depression generally hits in the 20s for men. Uh, and for women for that matter. Uh, and that kind of suggests what uh, major depression is all about. Generally, it hits people that are very driven in their careers. And when you're in your mid-20s and late-20s, that drive is hitting against reality, how difficult it is to be number one. Mm -hmm. And some individuals that have tremendous ambition, which many, many professional athletes have, hit up against the, the realization that they're not going to be number one in the world. And believe it or not, that can precipitate a major depression. So you're saying it's not a chemical well, imbalance in the brain? Uh, there's not much proof of that, and uh, generally speaking, uh, I would say that there's a significant uh, psychological component to a major depression and to uh, dysthymia also. The insulin has been compared to depression. Insulin with diabetes, some people have written, is not a big deal. If you have diabetes, you take insulin. But if you have depression, if you take Prozac or any of the drugs, that's considered bad. But you, don't, you evidently don't even prescribe to that, subscribe to that. Well, um, uh, antidepressants can help. There's no question about that. When you're having vegetative signs of depression, when you're suicidal, when you can't sleep and you can't eat and you're losing weight, it's very, very helpful to have something there that you can take that can help you. And it doesn't help all individuals, but it certainly helps some individuals. Uh, it helps pain sometimes. It certainly helps sleep a lot of times. 